Hi everybody, I'm Tony and welcome to my channel, Good Japan, Bad Japan, where today's topic is going to be me sharing something that landlords do here in Japan that really gets on my nerves. And if you're living in Japan now or have lived in Japan, especially if you're renting, it's probably something that's happened to you and has gotten on your nerves as well. Uh, but before I get into today's topic, let's go ahead and I'll uh, introduce myself for those of you who are new to the channel. So welcome. My name is Tony. I've been in Japan for almost six years now, and I started as a grade school ALT, just teaching elementary school and middle school kids. Uh, then I moved on to business English. And then from there, for the past couple of years, I've been in the corporate realm I moved from Wakayama to Tokyo, and so I've, I've been in this, this area um, for a couple of years now. So uh, welcome if you're new. If you have any questions about living in Japan, feel free to put them in the comments, uh, and especially feel free to comment on today's topic. Those of you who are returning viewers, I always appreciate your likes, your comments, your shares, and especially when you hit that subscribe button, uh, that always makes me happy. And for everybody that's visiting the channel, I hope you're enjoying the shorts. I believe I've put out over 110 at this point, and I've still got plenty more on the back burner. So uh, I hope that if you have an interest in learning Japanese, that the shorts are able to help provide you some context. And very shortly, I'm going to be taking the Kanji Kente Level 3 test. And once I pass that... I plan to do a video and share all my tips and tricks on how I got that passing grade. Yes, I know I sound pretty confident. Uh, I have a tried and true method that has never failed me, and I look forward to sharing it with all of you. Okay, so let's get into today's topic before I digress any further. Renting in Japan. Now, those of you who have followed the channel for, let me say, two years, I did a video and it was in my Teaching English in Japan playlist, and I'm going to bookmark it at the end so that that way you can jump right to it if you're interested, that just talked about renting in Japan in general. Because one thing that might come to mind in terms of something that a landlord would do to a foreigner might be discrimination related. And in that video, I kind of mentioned how I had trouble even getting to see an apartment because the real estate agent would call up a landlord and say, hey, I got a guy who wants to see your apartment. And it wouldn't matter that I was married to a Japanese national, that someone in her family could potentially act as a guarantor, or that I definitely made enough money to be able to pay what, what the rent would be every month. It was the word foreigner and... Never got to see the guy, never got to even talk to him on the other end of the phone. Just the real estate agent looks at me and says, sorry, he doesn't rent to foreigners. Not like you'd want a guy like that as your landlord anyway. So just plugging that video where I kind of talk about that experience further, but we're talking about actually in the middle of renting. What's something that foreigners do in the middle of renting? So we're not even talking about the reikin or reikin. I'm pronouncing it wrong because I'm trying to say it in English and not in Japanese. So reikin is, um, it's the gift money that when you move into an apartment or if you want an apartment, usually it's the equivalent of one month's rent. You give it as a gift to the landlord. Thank you for letting me rent your place. And maybe that's costing you five anywhere from $500 to $1,000 extra just as a gift for the nice landlord. And then you have the shikikin, which is your deposit, And but deposits can be pretty standard. And just, I know I'm digressing a little bit, but the gift money and the deposit money in Wakayama, I never had to pay because I was in an area that was the countryside, technically, and the apartment complex I lived in had already had uh, like three places that were unrented. So the, the landlord was burning money and everyone is building new homes around where I used to live. So why chase off someone who could give you at least some money by forcing them to pay gift money? So 
So this is actually during your tenure as a tenant, something that landlords do. And it's called koshinryo. Koshinryo. So koshin is to renew. So if you've lived in Japan or are living in Japan now and have had to renew your visa, you're probably familiar with the term koshin, which means to renew. Now, ryo is kind of like, almost kind of like the money. So it's a renewal fee. And so it's like the reikin, except this time we're talking a gift that you'd have to pay every two years. My understanding, talking to my wife, talking to other people, is that this is a fairly common practice. That once you're approaching your two-year mark, and it was the same in Wakayama, landlord would say, hey, are you uh, just letting you know, if you do absolutely nothing, we're going to automatically renew you for another two years. Same here. The, the, the place that I'm living in now, I've been here for over two years now. But I got a notice here. Not in Wakayama because you don't want to you don't want to scare me away when no one's renting your 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 apartments, um, but I had gotten a notice a couple of months ago that said your two year mark is on this day, and just giving you a heads up that I will be withdrawing double rent from your account, double rent. I'm not going to tell you how much my rent is. I'm in the Tokyo outskirts, so it's not cheap, <laughs> but. Imagine, imagine a landlord just saying, hey, two years is up. You're going to, you're going to give me double rent as, as a gift because, because I'm special. Um, and it just really can hit you at the wrong time if you're not expecting it. Because for example, at the same time that I'm expected to pay this double rent, I'm also having to pay an installment of my city tax. So usually city taxes, they let you pay it in installments of four, or you can pay it in a lump sum at any, or just all at once at any time. But we're talking tens of thousands of yen for city tax. And I'm also factoring in that I've got a wife who, because of maternity leave and because of how things worked out, hasn't been able to bring any money into the home for over the past year. And it's not her fault. But that's just how things worked out. She's not getting a whole lot of financial support from social insurance. I'm kind of having to carry the team. And we have a one-year-old baby. So all of these compounding costs, and on top of that, you just have something so so trivial for a landlord to just say, hey, you're going to give me double rent next month. And there's nothing you can do about it. Because what are you going to do? You're going you're gonna to move to somewhere else? Well, you've got moving costs. So that's going to cost a heck of a lot more. So you just kind of have to suck it up and, and bear it. You can't, you can't say no. Uh, you say no, you get kicked out and I've got nowhere else to go. So those of you, if this is resonating with you, I want to know in your home country or if you are living in Japan or have lived in Japan, is that commonplace? I don't remember ever in America renting an apartment that required me to pay every couple of years. It was more common for a landlord to just up your rent. And I dare say if if they just, if they upped my rent 1,000 or 2,000 yen a month, it would be far cheaper than having to pay that double rent. I, I would have complained a bit less. I would have been more understanding. It would have been something like, Oh, inflation. Sure. You've got, you've got costs you need to maintain too. You want to use inflation as, as your reason. Okay. You know, everyone else is understandable, but this is, this is gift money. and, And people here just suck it up and pay it now. So I hope you commented. I hope you have something to say about that system. Uh, I hope that if you're thinking of moving to Japan, that this is something that you're jotting down, that at the two-year mark, you're very likely having to pay an, uh, uh, just a hefty fee. It's going to hit you, especially if you're not not expecting it. And, and it's just, it's, it's insensitive. Now, 
what I will close with for this particular video is uh, first, let me have some coffee. It's a podcast, got to have some coffee. But what I would like to close with is a Netflix show that I watched recently that kind of shows what I'm talking about. And I'm going to spoil a little bit of it, but not too much. My wife and I just saw it. it. It's very recent on Netflix. It's called Woman, My Life for My Children. And the story centers around a single mother of two young kids. And I want to say it starts with uh, the daughter being four years old and the boy being one. And the husband had died in a tragic accident. And the mother is working part-time jobs like an izakaya or at a like a uniform washing place um, just to make ends meet. And I'm going to digress a little bit. I'm going to remember here to go back to her standard of living. But I want to point out how hard someone like that has it in Japan. Those people do exist. You may not notice it if you're a tourist, but who's cleaning all the toilets in all the public places? Almost, I would dare say almost 100% of the time, it's at least over 90% old women, older women, 50, 60 years old. I, women are in the men's bathroom all the time cleaning the toilets, whether it's at my workplace or whether it's at the train station, like you name it. Chances are if someone's cleaning a public toilet, it's an older woman. Who is working all the retail jobs at the supermarkets and, and you know places like that? Older women, middle-aged women, some, and, you know, like cashier, retail, working in the clothing stores, things like that. Go into any department store, go into any clothing store, younger women, typically. And you have to imagine that those jobs don't pay well. They just, you, you have to wonder how people like that make a living. Uh, now there might be some gray area and you can comment on this, but I'm just now thinking, okay, go into your neighborhood convenience store and you might, you'll see more of a mix. Maybe it's like 60 to 40% women to men, but you hear a lot in the news about gender inequity and it's really in your face. If you just look around you when you're in Japan, who's got the majority of the menial jobs that you can't really advance and, and don't pay well. Women. So let me circle back now. You've got a single mom who's got a four-year-old daughter and a one-year-old kid in this Netflix show, and she's living in a home that's smaller than mine. It's like a Leo palace. You just got one main room, and in different areas of the room, you've got, there's your kitchen. You know, your kitchen is connected to the main room where everyone lays out their futon and sleeps. There's no extra bedrooms. It's small. And she's barely able to keep the lights on because she'll get an electric bill and she'll be behind on it. And she'll have to beg for an advance on her paycheck. But what really, really hit me when watching that show, because it's a heavy show. If you watch it, it is heavy. Is when the landlord comes knocking on her door and says, your two month mark is or two year mark is approaching and we're going to charge you koshinryo we're going to charge you a renewal fee there is zero sympathy for anybody regardless of situation it is just a cold unemotional business decision by the landlord to just take more because he can so as I mentioned before, I want to know in your home country, if you've experienced anything like that, do you have landlords that after a period of time will just charge you double or charge you a set fee just because it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't say in, in the contract that this money will be used for X purpose. It's just gone. It's a gift. So I want to know if that's happened to you. I want to know your experience with this renewal fee in Japan and did it or does it irk you to no end? Um, so please leave a comment. If this was informative, I hope you hit that like button. If you've seen that Netflix show, I'd be curious to know about that too. 
So uh, once again, that Netflix show is called Woman, My Life for My Children. And just it's it's kind of a nice window also into what probably many people experience in Japan. So and that you just never know about, especially if you're a single mom. Uh, There's also some good stuff in there about uh, what you hear about divorce which if you're an expat, you know, keep that in mind when you're, when you're married that, um, typically if there's a divorce, the wife gets the kid almost a hundred percent of the time and she can completely bar the husband from being able to see the kids at all. That's in the show too. So just really real look at Japan. So Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. I think I'll just close with that for today. And I'll have that video I mentioned bookmarked at the end. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks.